Next we have Pat Stopulus to introduce Brad Shuka. became aware of Brad Shukow. It was 1967, and I was a sophomore at the University of Iowa. And I had the good fortune at that time to have as a friend and as a fraternity brother a fellow by the name of Marty Shukow. Well, Marty one day came up to me and with understandably great excitement and great pride telling me that his kid brother had just been awarded a full ride golf scholarship to the University of Iowa, and that he would be coming to Iowa City the following fall. Well, you know, that news in and of itself was understandably memorable, but it's what, what Marty said next what was really striking to me. He said, well, you know, actually, my brother's lucky to be alive. He should have died about a year ago. Well, Brad indeed came to Iowa that next fall. He actually joined our fraternity. We became friends and teammates on the Iowa golf team. It was then that I learned that the condition that almost took his life was chronic ulcerative colitis. And it's a condition he's had ever since. Uh, the condition got so bad when he was a junior in high school that he spent six months in the hospital. He lost almost half of his body weight and couldn't play golf for nearly a year. Yet he came back in his senior year and helped his Roosevelt High School golf team win the state title. Now, I of course have no idea what enabled him to survive that life-threatening situation back then. But I'd like to think that the grit and the determination that he showed through his golf career, later on in his business career, and through his personal life, just might have had something to do with it. Now, before I tell you about his successes on the golf course, I'd like to share a couple of personal observations with you. When Brad was winning his 20 or so tournaments, there was no doubt that what separated him from his fellow competitors was his short game. I mean, it was the best I'd ever seen. He was blessed with an extraordinary sense of touch and feel. In fact, our college golf coach, Chuck Zweiner, once said, you know, Brad does not have a classic golf swing, but he knows where that club head is as well as anybody that I've ever seen or ever coached. <clears throat> Unlike some, Brad has had relatively few golf lessons in his life. I always kind of got the impression that the mechanics of the golf swing were almost an afterthought to him. Whenever I would try to engage him in a, in a conversation about the finer points of the golf swing, I could just see his eyes just kind of glaze over. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't take me long to figure out that the only thing he was interested in doing was somehow, some way, getting that ball into the hole. You may have heard the expression, he or she could will the ball into the hole. Well, I've played with him and against him many, many times over the years, and I swear he can do that. His determination and his will to succeed was exceptional. Now on a side note, his touch and his feel and his and-eye coordination extended beyond the golf course. He played on his Roosevelt High School basketball team. 
and even won a billiards tournament, a citywide billiards tournament at the tender age of 15, beating a bunch of adults along the way. But the reason we're here tonight is to recognize his golf achievements, which are quite impressive. His first statewide golf win was the Iowa Junior, which he won at age 16. He went on to win the Iowa Amateur twice, the Iowa Masters twice, the Iowa Open, and was a two-time winner of the Sami. He twice earned the IGA Player of the Year honors. At the collegiate level, he was an all Big Ten selection as a Hawkeye in 1970. He's played in two U.S. Opens and tied for ninth at the 1971 U.S. Amateur. He turned pro later in 1971 and won a couple of tournaments on what was then called the Mini Tour probably equivalent today of the web.com tour. In the mid-70s, he scaled back his competitive golf and started what turned out to be an awfully successful insurance career. He regained his amateur status in 1978 and capped off his playing career by winning both the Iowa Open and the Iowa Amateur in 1980. Life, like golf, has moments of exhilaration and periods of despair. Brad and Sue, his wife of 46 years, have experienced both. Sue has been there to share the many successes that Brad has had on the golf course. In fact, I dare say she played no small role in that success with her support and her encouragement. They've dealt with Brad's ulcerated colitis without complaint, without bitterness, they were side by side when building the successful insurance business. But the low point in their lives was certainly the loss of their beautiful daughter Diane nine years ago. The unimaginable grief that followed led to a commitment by Brad and Sue to endow a scholarship at the University of South Florida School of Nursing in Diane's name. They've also given back in other ways. While living in Des Moines and now in the Sarasota, Florida area, Brad and Sue have donated much of their time and resources to multiple community service organizations and boards. Brad has told me on more than one occasion during our 50-year friendship that you got to play the cards you're dealt in life. He and Sue have done that with grace and resilience. Brad has neither been boastful when dealt his good cards, nor a whiner when he's been dealt the bad hands. Yet he could have easily been both. I'm absolutely thrilled that the IGA has elected him to be in the Hall of Fame, and I'm truly honored to introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Shukak. been uh, a great experience coming back here to see you. There's an awful lot of friends and acquaintances I've made in the past and, uh, and rekindled all my early years playing uh, the Iowa Golf Tournament. It uh, was a very, very wonderful and informative time in my life. And I really want to thank the Iowa Golf Association and the Selection Committee for the honor of being included in this special group. I'm truly humbled and appreciative of being voted in. And I would also like to congratulate all the other inductees. It's really quite an honor, and thank you. But I would like to give it also a very special thanks to Pat Stopulus, who submitted the nomination to the IGA and did the research on the information required to support the nomination. He has been a great friend since my college days, and as he said, we were college roommates, fraternity brothers, we played on the Iowa golf team <coughs> Pat and I visit on a monthly basis uh, over all the years I've known him. And I had no idea that he had submitted this nomination uh, to the Iowa Golf Association. 
until I received the call from Gene Elliott in January, saying that I was voted in. It was really quite a shock being gone from Iowa so long. It was uh, really a surprise. Another very special thank you goes to my wife Susan for keeping a very detailed account of my golfing career for the past 50 years. Uh, she's been a great life partner in everything. Uh, and she let me make, for the first 20 years of our marriage, uh, golf a very high priority. Uh, she's a very tolerant and very understanding person, which I'm very thankful for. As we all know who play this game, a bad ground can follow you home. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, uh, it happened a number of times in our marriage. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the individuals who wrote the recommended, excuse me, recommendation letters to support my nomination. Bill Newland was one, who was two boys are here, I've known them their entire lives. John Brooke, who was a fraternity brother. Chuck Sawyer, our golf coach. I had to talk to Chuck in a number of years, and it was a real pleasure visiting with him uh, this past uh, few months, months ago. Uh, and Joe Kehoe, who I do not know, but was a good friend of Pat's, and, and wrote the letter. There are a few other individuals that I would also like to acknowledge that significantly impacted my golfing career. At the top of the list would be my parents, Victor and Alice Shukai. They were part of that greatest generation and they wanted to provide their children a better life and a better opportunity than they had. So they joined the Des Moines Golf and Country Club when I was five years old. That was 63 years ago. And that's where I got exposed to golf. My brother Marty and I competed in all the golf events that the club had to offer. And then golf was part of my summers for here while living in Iowa for the next 50 years. I'd also like to acknowledge my in-laws, Bob and Edie Dreyer. They were extremely supportive of my two year short professional career. It was fun and enjoyable two years while playing golf for a living. But I made the right decision to come back to Iowa to raise our family. And uh, I know what you're going through out there. It's a, it's a tough road to hoe, but you seem to be doing a pretty good job. <laughs> there are three other individuals I'd like to mention. Uh, and they were all members of the Des Moines Golf and Country Club. The first was Joe Brown, who was our <laughs> golf professional for 37 years. He is also a uh, Hall of Fame inductee. Extremely accomplished player. I learned a tremendous amount from the game from him while growing up, uh, from course management to managing the emotions of the golf course. He was a great role model to learn from. Also, another Iowa Hall of Fame inductee, Jim Raisley, was also a member of our club. He ran the Iowa Golf Tournament programs for over 20 years on a volunteer basis. Jim took me to golf tournaments to play before I could even drive a car. In those days, you could get by playing in a golf tournament for less than 100 bucks for the weekend. Uh, Jim's son, Jimmer, was my uh, caddy during the years that I played the Iowa Circuit. I believe Jim's dedicate, dedication and commitment to the Iowa Golf Association and its programs are one of the reasons it is as strong as it is today. I was very privileged to gain a lot of tournament experience at a very young age. Another member, at our club was a man named Claire Grant, who very few people would know today because he was part of uh, uh, the Joe Brown, uh, Jim Raisley era, era and uh, was a very accomplished player. And he helped put the group together that funded my short professional career. He had a tremendous <coughs> influence on my life and teaching that the true meaning of the game was more to take the high road in competing in golf, but if you happen to come out on top, it's just icing on the case. My tournament days ended in the early 1980s because of family and business commitments. As you all know, to play at a high level takes countless hours needed to spend practicing and honing the fine points of your game. It's an ongoing commitment of time and energy. 
I still enjoy playing, but have not gotten used yet to the aging process and the escalating scores of public. But it's inevitable. Uh, but since having some health issues, I still feel very fortunate to, to still be able to tee it up when I want. For such a small state in a northern climate, Iowa has improved, uh, produced some amazing golfers in recent years. Zach Johnson on the professional side, Mike McCoy on the amateur side. And Jerry, you played quite well too. <laughs> this is due to no small part for the Iowa Golf Association's long hours and efforts spent to provide quality opportunities and support of the game of the state's golfers. I think it's great the, that the Iowa Golf Association is still providing a great venue for competitive golf in Iowa for all who want to take advantage of it. It's run by an outstanding group of individuals for the benefit of the game of golf. I'm amazed with the amount of services that are now provided on their website. It's amazing. It's been and still been one of the top programs in the country from the start of the Iowa Golf Association with my association in the early, uh, the late 60s and 70s. It's improved yearly ever since. I've been gone from the, from the Iowa golf scene for a very long time, but still want to thank you for being included as, a, as an inductee. It's a career-ending bonus. Thank you. <laughs>